Tom, thanks very much for uh, sitting down to talk with us a little bit today. Um, I wanted to ask a couple questions based on your experience at the Wildlife, Wildland Conservancy. Um, first, I think something basic. How did you get started in conservation work? Um, well, I used to build furniture. I did that for a dozen years before I, uh, Jim Brett uh, pulled me in at Hawk Mountain and uh, got involved with the uh, sanctuary management and then eventually into the business side of the, of the management of the sanctuary uh, association. I was there for four years and um, got offered this job at Wildlands as the CEO um, in 1987. And that's kind of the connection. It doesn't seem like much of a connection maybe between uh, preserving furniture and preserving land, but uh, there really is in my mind uh, protecting you know, important things in this world. Old furniture happens to be one of those things, and land is too. That's great. I think a lot of people come into the environment in different directions, yeah, and they they add to the richness, I think, of the environmental movement. I think one of the things that was a, it's a hallmark of Wildlands and your ten, tenure as a CEO there was the fact that you built some very tremendous partnerships. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how you did, did it? Yeah, Dave, the, the, the partnerships is, is critically important and, and will always be, I think, believe, always important to uh, any of the work that Wildlands does or any other conservation organization in the country. Um, for us, I came at a time when, when organizations of our type were really sort of struggling to move out of the fire in the belly phase into, you know, management as, as, a, as a business, essentially, is really what it is. And uh, it just became increasingly important that we didn't have, uh, nor do any of us, really have the resources to do it alone, and that we really needed to uh, come together with, with our peers. Um, but with the corporate community and, and certainly with state government, and it coincided with a with a in a with a, a, a type of thinking in state government, and you were actually part of that yourself, uh, yep. where they realized that the government could not do, and maybe even should not do, everything uh, itself. It needed partners, um, strong, healthy partners on the landscape that could that were you know in the field that could actually do. Uh, many of the tasks that needed to be done uh, much more efficiently, uh, uh, more inexpensively in some ways. We had, to, we had a huge uh, cadre of volunteers, and I'm speaking collectively of the, of the conservation organizations in the state, uh, volunteers to help do it, and that's where it just became obvious that uh, we could do it maybe in, in ways better than the government could, and, and they saw it as well and, and began to infuse help and expertise uh, into our efforts. Uh, so it was a very important one in, in Wildlands. Uh, probably isn't really unique in that sense, uh, but we do uh, feel very strongly and always have that our partners are really, none of the many things we've accomplished, and I feel very very proud of the things we've accomplished. They really were a collective collective effort among the, you know, the people on the staff and the board and our members, uh, but also our partners uh, on every really every conceivable level. Uh, it's just a really important uh, aspect of, of how we all grew. What are some of the, I think, important partnership opportunities you created? I mean, the Conservancy has been involved in not only traditional land conservation, 45,000 acres or, or so, uh, but also cleaning up watersheds uh, themselves, mine drainage projects. Can you give me some examples of those partnerships you talked about? Yeah, that particular one's uh, very significant one really is sort of in a way just getting started on the, a the AMD cleanup projects uh, have completed one of the eight outfalls on the, on the Lehigh. Uh, but that one had, well the first thing we did was a, um, a um, Lehigh River Conservation, Watershed Conservation Management Plan on the, on the whole watershed. We started out doing some of the smaller tribs and decided let's just do the whole enchilada and, and get it done and, and uh, that was a, a real smart move I think. Um, but that, is, that, that partnership itself in doing that management plan, there were 55 partners in that, in that effort. Uh, about the uh, same time, well, 10 years ago, we started the uh, uh, Lehigh River Sojourn itself. That was a huge partnership that involved everybody who cared at all about the river was involved with that. Um, and then when we moved into the AMD remediation project on the, on the Luzon Tunnel up above uh, near Jim Thorpe, that happened to be on state, on DCNR land, 
uh, DEP was interested in the project as well, and put funds towards it as well as the uh, other organizations that are involved with AMD uh, and municipalities and, and fishing fishing organizations, hunting organizations, all kinds of folks came together to, to make that project work. And it's it really is the kind of the foundation for how we go forward. We have seven more to do We're in the water, in, on the Lehigh, uh, very significant problems, but not in Super Bowl. And uh, feel very very good about that. And, and we're trying to pull the, the feds into it as well, to help bring major dollars towards it. In terms of Lehigh Valley, what kinds of pressures do you see coming in the future or that are there right now that are going to shape a little bit about what Wildlands is going to do in the future or what what environmental issues will face the Lehigh Valley in the future? Well, what's happening in the Lehigh Valley is um, it's it's pretty daunting actually. It's it's the growth is, is uh, land use, land consumption is, is really sort of scary and uh, our struggle, conservation struggle uh, is to keep pace. Uh, we're surely not trying to stop anything. People have to have places to work and live. And, uh, we just, we talk a lot about the gray and the green infrastructure. The gray being the, the tubes and wires and ropes and uh, wires and bridges and roads uh, and the green infrastructure which is the, the parks and the trails and the open spaces and the farm fields and that there needs to be some kind of parity between those two things, not not one to one necessarily, but uh, uh, we're we're losing the race pretty pretty seriously at this point. So it's a real challenge. But again, again, not an insuperable one. I think we can we we, we Wildlands is focusing on on a priority list of, uh, of parcels that, that and, and, and amenities that need to be preserved, protected, whatever. Um, and we just need to stay focused on that and, and, and try not to be distracted by smaller smaller projects but it's it's gonna it's gonna work I think I think what's happening with the, with the, with the constituency there is that they really do see that it's 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 serious it's a problem and they're, gonna, they're gonna join in and help I'm sure <laughs> well part of the the efforts wildlands has have done are educational efforts to show and identify some of these issues there that people can then figure out how to deal with and and uh, come to terms with. One of my favorite one of my favorite things to do, and it's one of the things that's kept me interested in, in my work over my many years with the conservancy, is being able to be on the river in canoe in a canoe. Um, I've taken an awful lot of people. Uh, well, a lot of people have gone on the sojourns, but uh, I do in the fall. I do Friday trips uh, in canoes and taking movers and shakers on the river, to showing them this resource, which is just a phenomenal. Uh, every river, everybody loves every river for some reason, but, and this one is very special uh, to me. And uh, I'm trying to make it special. Have been trying to make it special for many people over many years, and it seems to work. Well, Tom Kerr's not going to go anywhere. No. What are your future plans? Well, right now I'm uh, I'm going to be half time with the conservancy, helping Chris Cucker in, in that transition, which feels really good to me. I, Chris is an enormously capable fellow. Uh, has been preparing for this change for for many years. We've both been making this, preparing for this change. But uh, I'll be there for the rest of the year on a part time basis, and then uh, and then maybe even beyond that. But I'm I'm, I'm uh, exploring several other possibilities. Um, some of it involving engineering, uh, but in the environmental field. Sure. Well, Chris kept me from falling out of the canoe on one of your sojourns, so I'm sure he'll do a, a, a great job. But I'm sure we haven't heard the last from Tom Kerr, and thanks for all your uh, your contributions, Tom, and we look forward to uh, your contributions in the future. Thanks.